In this presentation, we're going to record deposits related to an owner putting money into the business and related to a loan being taken from the bank. These are the first two ways that oftentimes businesses will start off with the cash flow, the owner putting money into the business or taking some type of loan out. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're first going to open up a report to see what our objectives will be. We're going to open to go to the reports. And then we're going to be opening up our favorite report, that being the balance sheet report. So let's open up that balance sheet report. Going to change the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. Let's go ahead and run that report. And then I'm going to copy that report up top. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate that tab. I'm also going to open the trial balance. I want to get used to basically having the trial balance open as well. I think it's a report that's useful to get used to using. And so we're going to be up top. I'm going to search for it by saying trial balance. So trial balance. And then I'll find it. It's right there. We're going to open up the trusty trial balance. Going to scroll back up top. Changing the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. January through December 2020. Run that report. Then I'm going to duplicate that tab. Clicking on the tab up top or just hovering on it and then right clicking on it and duplicate that tab. Now, if, if I go back to the balance sheet now, tab, I'm going to hold down control and scroll up a little bit. So I'm at a uh, zooming of 125. Our objective now, oftentimes when you have a new business is the cash account will be funded by the owner. So the owner has to put money into the organization and so that's a transaction that's a little bit more difficult to deal with because it's not a normal type of transaction. In other words, if you were to be going to the plus button up here and look at your normal type of transactions, uh, you don't really see anything for the owner putting money into the organization. The reason is because hopefully that's not something that happens all the time. Most of the money going into the business hopefully comes from customers in some way, shape or form and it's part of the revenue cycle. So therefore we have to enter this in some kind of non-standard way or you know not just a, a normal type of transaction that we see most of the time we we could do this with a deposit form let's take a look at that by going back to the first tab then hitting the plus button and then in the other section we now have the deposit in the other section record bank deposit and we have the deposit form here now note that normally when we saw the deposit form it was part of the the customer cycle taking money out of undeposited funds and we had that pop-up screen to help us to, to basically populate the deposit screen because it was it was going to make an automatic transaction out of undeposited funds here we don't see that pop up here because we're, we're going straight to the deposit rather than going through an invoice and then receive payment or to a sales receipt but to enter the deposit here we would just enter the amount and then we can enter the other side of the account whatever the other side will be I'm going to use the register here though because I think it's a little bit faster to do with the register so let's close this out and if we have a straight deposit in this format, my typical method would be going to the register. So let's do that by going to the accounting down below. We're going to go to the accounting. We're going to be in the chart of accounts. I'm holding down control. I'm going to bring it down to 100 again. And then we're in the checking account up top. I'm going to take a look at the register within the checking account. So I'm going to open up the register in the checking account. I'm then going to close the hamburger so we have a little bit more space. The only thing in the register at this time is that 25,000 beginning balance that we put in place. If we select this drop down, add, add, I'm sorry, add a check, we want to add a different items here. We want to add a deposit. So we're going to go down and add a deposit. And so we have this data input screen for the deposit. We're going to put the date of the deposit. I'm going to put 010120 for the deposit date. And then the payee, you could put the payee here. I'm going to keep it blank. It would be basically the owner. I'm going to say owner deposit in the memo. And then the, the deposit amount is going to be 65000 So 65000 for the amount. Let's see if I can make this a little bit larger for you. 65000 for the amount. Then we need to decide what the other side will be. In other words, this is inc increasing the cash, the checking account, of course. Where's, where's the other side going to go? Because usually it, you'd think it would be revenue or something like that. But here the owner put it in. So you don't want it in revenue. It needs to be going to an equity account. It needs to be going to equity. So when the owner puts it in, it needs to be going to some kind of equity. If I select the drop down and scroll down and see what types of equity accounts we have here. I'm looking for over here equity. So we changed the retained earnings to be the equity 
account called Capital. Opening balance is that one we don't typically use. Uh, QuickBooks has given us an account called Owner's Investments. So that that is one we, we can use. What that'll do is it'll track the investments separately from the Capital account. So you could put it right into Capital, but or you can separate it out. You could be putting it into Investments, and therefore the Capital account will basically only be used to close out the income statement to the capital. If you hadn't changed the name, it would be called retained earnings. And then we can use the investments to show the amount of money that we, as the owner, put into the organization in the uh, investment equity section. So let's use that. I'm gonna use that and then we're gonna record this. And I'm gonna scroll over and, and select the save button. So we then record it. And then if I hold down control and I'm going to minimize the screen a little bit, now we're at the 90,000. Notice the new transaction happened on top. So it's in kind of reverse order. So the newest transaction is on top. Let's see what the effect is on our trial balance. If we go to our trial balance, refresh the screen. I'm going to close the hamburger. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. We're at 125 in the checking accounts at 90,000. If I select that 90,000 in the checking account, here, uh, here we have the detail of the information. If I go to the right, there's the 65,000. Notice the transaction type is a deposit. So even though we entered it into the register, QuickBooks calls it a deposit, makes it the deposit form, uh, the form that will be used. If I select that then, it doesn't take me to the register. It takes us to a deposit form. So even though we entered into the register, which I do think is a little bit faster, QuickBooks will basically create the form related to money going into the bank, which is a deposit. Now you can see the checking account up top and the other side of the transaction down here, owner's investment. Let's take a look at the other side. We're going to close this back out and I'm going to scroll to the right. We're going to go back to the other side of things. And the other side is down here in the equity section. We have a, an account now called owner's investment, part of the equity section. Selecting that item, we will then once again see that deposit. There's that deposit again. Scrolling back up, let's go back to the reports. Considering this just on the balance sheets, just so we get a feel for the balance sheet with the subtotals. Obviously the checking account is up top. Well, let's refresh the screen. Refresh the screen. So checking accounts up top at the 90,000. Scrolling back down in the equity section now, now we have the capital account and we have this new equity account of the 65,000 increasing equity because equity basically represents what is owed to the owner. So if revenue goes up, revenue goes up and that means there's more equity that would basically be owed to the owner or the net value assets minus liabilities of the organization. If the owner puts money into the organization, then basically that would be going right back to the, to the owner. It'd be cash going up the other side representing amount basically owed back to the owner at some point. All right, so that's the first type of, of transaction. Let's think about the other way that the organization may start off getting money, which could be a loan. So I'm gonna go back to the first screen again. Now the loan, again, we could do two different ways. We could enter a deposit, as we saw before, just like with, just like with the, the money coming from uh, the owner, we could select the plus button and go to the record bank deposit. And then we can record that deposit form I, with the with the uh, cash going up and then the other side going to the uh, some kind of loan payable account down below. We're going to practice here, however, using the register. So I'm going to close this back up and we're going to go. We're back in the register. I'm going to remove the hamburger, closing the hamburger, and we're going to add another deposit. So I'm going to select the drop down here. I want to add another deposit. So we're going to go right into the register, adding the deposit. We're going to say the date is going to be. Uh, 011019. Note that the date should actually be 010120, not 19. You could change that if you so choose. I'm going to keep it at 19 right now. And then when I run the reports, I will realize that uh, there's a problem with the date. And that's a common realization. If there's a problem, often a date type of situation. So you can either put the 2020 here or you can go into the reports. I'm going to go back into the reports when we run them and then make that adjustment as uh, is typically the case. Like I say, if there's, an, if there's a problem with the financial statements, oftentimes it's a date issue, especially if you're working in the past or putting data in, input sometime uh, in the past. And we're gonna say that the payee, we're gonna say this comes from Chase, let's say. That's gonna be a bank, so a bank. And if I say tab, it's gonna say, hey, we don't have that. Do you want to set them up? Should it be a customer, vendor, or employee? Now, none of those are really quite appropriate because Chase is basically, you know, not really a customer or a vendor really here. So I'm going to keep it at the customer for now. I'm going to say save. And then we're going to say memo. This is going to be 
bank loan and we're going to say it was a deposit of 50,000. So we got 50,000 loan from the bank. We owe the bank back. Therefore, the other side needs to go to some type of liability such as a loan payable. So I'm going to select the drop down and I'm looking over here at the type of accounts, right? The, so the top are expenses. I'm looking for some kind of liability account to see if we have a, a loan payable. So here's the current assets, fixed assets, you know, accounts payable, credit card. Here's a long term liability and it's a note payable. So we have a note payable here. Now, you, now when you have a new loan, you may want to break out the notes payable in, into multiple different accounts or you can put them into the same account here. Let's break it out this time and see what that'll look like. I'm going to say this is another note payable. I'm going to say uh, tab. We're going to add this up and I'm going to say that this is going to be a long term liability. I'm going to put them all under long term liability. So they're under that subcategory of the note payable. So I'm going to say it's a long term liability. I'm going to call it note payable. And in the number, I'm going to give it a new number, right? I'll give it a new number here. And, it, and it's not going to be a sub account. Uh, it's just going to be under the, the long term liabilities. So I'm going to save that and see what that will look like. I'm going to go ahead and record this. So I'm going to uh, scroll to the right. I had to minimize the screen there a bit for the scroll bar to appear. So just realize that I'm going to minimize the screen. I'm going to scroll to the right. I'm going to save it. And so that, that puts it on top now. Now let's take a look at what happens to the financials. I'm going to go back to the trial balance. I'm going to refresh the screen. I'm going to minimize the hamburgers, hold down control, put it back to that 125. There we are in the checking account, selecting the checking account. We then see our uh, deposit here of the 65. And I don't see the other side. Why? My first, in, my first indication is going to be, ah, maybe there's a date problem, right? Maybe I entered it in the wrong date. So let me check that. I'm going to say, what if I put this back to 2019? Does it show up then if I go in here? Uh, does it does does it show up if I run that report? And I'm going to say, yeah, it does. Right? There's our there's our deposit. It shouldn't have been there on on January 1st, 2019. I want to change the date. Then how am I going to do that? I'm going to click on it. It'll open up the form related to it. It's not going to take me back to the register. It's going to open up the deposit form. And then I'm simply going to change the date up top. I'm going to say I want this to be 2020, not 2019. And then we're going to go ahead and save and close that. And so there we have it. Now, now if I adjust, so now it's in there as of 2020 for the Chase loan for the 50,000. So then I'm going to go back to our prior report, going to go back to the reports. And then the other side should be in the loans payable. So here's the, the note payable. The new one we made was this one for the 50,000. So I'm gonna select that item. There's the other side. So I scroll back up. Notice we have on our trial balance these two loans now with different numbers. So you can kind of track them separately uh, if you need to, if you so choose. Now let's see what it looks like on the balance sheet. So I'm gonna to go to the last tab. I'm gonna refresh the screen. And Here's what we have then on the balance sheet. If we scroll down, we're going to be picking up, we're looking at the liability here. You'll see those two notes then under the long-term loan payable. So this might be e easier to see if you have multiple notes to kind of put them in their own accounts. Now, when you give the report to someone else, they probably don't care about the multiple notes and they want it combined into one account where you can, you can combine them this way or have a sub account with the loans that will be involved in there but it's kind of easier to track if you have basically one account per loan. And again, just remember that you're also going to think, be thinking about short-term and long-term portion. It's easier, most oftentimes, it's easier to just track the loans in one account, short or long-term with one account, and then break out the short and long-term portion in the adjusting entry process. Uh, other, otherwise, it, it becomes quite tedious if you have multiple loans and you're breaking out the short and long-term portion with basically every payment. So just keep that in mind as well.